I want to die. In keeping with my proclivity to play devil's advocate, I bring you Yandere Dev. And boy, do people really love to paint him as a devil. I was wanting to make a video on Yandere Simulator a little later, about how the story is about as complex as the average porn, and also talking about the gameplay for a bit. But recently, there's been so many videos about Yandere Dev and the Yandere Simulator, that I feel I should probably speak up about something else. And this is about Yandere Dev's decision on not putting Osana in right away, which I 100% agree with. And about the other thing about people saying reusing assets makes everyone feel like a clone of each other. Eh, I'm gonna be tackling that one as well, so let's get it started. The thing about Yandere Dev's decision is to not put Osana into the game until after the features are implemented, in my opinion it is one of the best courses of actions that you could take and this is why. Just imagine if Osana was into the game right at the beginning, back when it was just a small sandbox game. Yandere Chan starts out right next to her and kills her. Done. Now features start to get added. There is a wall and you have to go around the wall to kill her. Now more features get added again. Now you have to go around the wall and hop a box and then kill her. And then even more features get added. Now you need to go around the wall, hop a box, and dodge a knife, then kill her. Over time as more and more features get added, you will grow bored of the stuff that was added first. It will start to get tedious, and the end result will never be satisfying because you have completed the objective many times over. And the only difference is a few more features each time. But you may think this sounds very speculative, right? Like it's impossible to prove. Let's take a look at another game that was also partnered with Tiny Build. Hello Neighbor. It was big a while ago, and every build it put out it had everything that was going to be in the game, the story and all. It was just the game plus a few more features every build. With building like that, no matter how the game ended, it wouldn't be possible to live up to the hype because of the mere fact that we saw everything but a couple of features with no real changes, which pretty much killed the game the very moment it was finished, giving people a reaction like this. That was it? There's gotta be something after this. That was way too short and that was way too confusing. I guess I'll give you guys my thoughts on what I think about this game. First of all, I can't believe that it's all over. Like, I remember playing this last year and I was so excited for all the things to come. And this is the full game. This is what you get. Do I think that it's worth 30 bucks? No, I do not think it's worth 30 bucks at all. I thought things would be a little bit more clear about what the hell is even going on with this game. A little more backstory to the neighbor. Maybe some backstory with this pointy nose bug-eyed freak. Hello Neighbor had the full story in the demo, and people that played every demo that they put out got completely bored of it, because the way that they added it, the story was done, and they added features between it. The first demo did not have the full story in it, but the moment they did put the full story in it, that is when every update from then on became very trivial, because it was just the same game, but with a few more features. Nothing significantly changed because of it. When thinking of Yandere Simulator though, it won't be the full game, it would just be the first rival. And with that being said, I have a few more things to be explaining about that later, but we'll get back to that point. How about the impossible game? Imagine this being built and it puts out three new obstacles every time it comes out with a new update. And we can be generous, and instead of twice a month, like how Yandere Dev does it, we can do every seven days. Over time, you will hate the constantly having to go through the one thing over and over and over and over. After a while, no matter how much progress they do into the game, the game itself will never be satisfying with how it ends. More of it will be, oh, it's finally ended. Now I hear you asking, how would putting the features first in, then Osana not do this? Well, that is actually very simple. It won't feel anywhere near the same, because if you add features without connecting them, they will just be like that, little features that just happen to be inside the game. Osana is supposed to feel like a boss. In most good games, a boss will take a features that have been in the game up until that point and mix them together. Just like how Grand Theft Auto Story Mode feels very different from you just running around and doing anything you want, or you playing Metroid Prime where you go through the levels collecting everything, and then and later you mix it all together to defeat the bosses. But there is one thing that Yandere Dev really needs to remember about this strategy. It's a double-edged sword. The moment Osana is added, the whole game will be changed, but there will be a lot of hype around it. If it doesn't meet the expectations, which it will be very high of expectations, that could make a lot of people leave the game. So the moment Osana is added, it better be good. Now here's something that is hard. Explaining how copying something doesn't make it feel like the same thing coding-wise. So instead of just giving an explanation dump, let me just show you how first and then explain it. Because this... was copied into this. But hey, is it still a bit too similar? Okay, how about this? copied into this. <laughs> Do 
Still too similar? Well, okay, one last example then. This... Copied into this. Copying assets doesn't necessarily mean it will be the same, as long as you change it up enough. With the video he has made detailing about the rivals, you know he's going to be changing it up. If you mean the repetitive nature, as in, every week there's a new rival that you have to get rid of, then I have no real clue what you're expecting from Yandere Simulator. That has always been the plan from the start. When you're copying assets, it just literally makes the coding go faster because you aren't doing everything from scratch all over again. You are just changing what is necessary to be changed for each character. In fact, it is better to copy and paste in my opinion the code rather than just doing it from scratch every time. There is a much bigger chance for you to mess up because you are dealing with everything and you're just coding and can easily skip a step. And it takes a lot longer. The real problem I find with Yandere Dev doing this is how often his game glitches, which I feel is because of him improper copying, which is him just forgetting to change some of the code to make the triggers have different activations. Seeing glitches like these is probably because he's having a character do multiple commands at once. So instead of one after another, it is trying to do both of them at the same time, which instead has them do neither of the commands. Or so I think. Without looking at the code, I can't really tell for sure. So this is just a guess, give or take. There has been a lot of videos surrounding Yandere Dev. While the fall of Yandere Dev came out a few months ago, and recently just went away and back with a lot more views now, there has been a lot of others popping up as a bandwagon. I don't find every point in there to be accurate though. Stuff like using the Hibiki meme to try and insinuate things about him, with showing his liked videos that had people supposedly underage mixed with this meme, and then using the two things to make a connection like he likes the stuff in real life, which I'm not sure which is more retarded. The person who made the video and said that him posting this meme means he likes the stuff in it, or the person he ordered to go find where it's from, and then being shocked at what they found, because he thinks Yandere Dev supports this stuff as well. First off, here's proof that it is just a meme, and people use that in the anime community, unless you want to say everyone that liked it completely supports it. Second, That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. The meme is literally to remove context, and just to show that people really want whatever the bag represents. Third, that is like saying people making the This Is America meme, and using that to show that they support killing and the oppression of minors. You're a genius. No matter what way you look at this evidence, it is very dumb. Even with Yandere Dev having been open to his waifu being Samus, and I don't see her being a kid with what y'all are implying. A lot of this is because some people are stating this as an actual point for him being bad, that Yandere Dev is a bad person because he's a pervert. To me, it just sounds like a really dumb statement. Sure, there are things that he has done, you can say that it is bad, but to state a reason for calling him a bad person is because of him being a pervert kind of reminds me of a different situation. A good chunk of the evidence used against Yandere Dev is by taking the most cynical look at it and coming to the worst possible outcome. Just mostly a medical wannabe trying to expose Yandere Dev, but you can't say this means this without thinking of other possible outcomes and seeing which is more reasonable of the outcome. For it to be more accurate, he would need to cut out about one third of his video. But beyond that, I don't really find too much of a problem with the video. It does explain a lot of things. And I will say there's a lot of actual facts to back up what he's saying. I just don't agree with all the conclusions about it. And then you got people like Argent who have made over three hours worth of video and only had one valid point. But yeah, let's talk about some other videos instead of those two. Because I may visit the Argent videos in the future, based on how I'm feeling. How long does it take to make a video game? Not too long if you actually do it, surprisingly. Five seconds later. That is indeed true. Games are, naturally, a big undertaking that will take a lot of time and effort to create. An ambitious project headed by one or a few people is naturally going to take a very long time. Contradictions? What's that? God of War was in development since 2013, but it wasn't announced until 2016. And we didn't get to play it until 2018. Have you noticed an ironic trend here? The games that Yandere Dev has brought up here have all been announced after they have been in development for a considerable amount of time. Yandere Simulator, on the other hand, was, for all intents and purposes, announced at the very moment it began development. Yandere Dev may have just contradicted his own message. This is not a contradiction. The message was the video game takes a long time, but he announced it as soon as it was being worked on, which makes it feel like the game is taking longer than it should have. There is no contradiction here. Yandere Simulator is almost as complex 
as a Hitman game combined with a Persona game. It's a stealth assassination game, but it's also a school simulation game. Considering how the game is right now, this statement is a complete lie. Now, if you mean that Yandere Simulator is going to be as complex as that, then it would be a different story. Semantics, of course he means when it's done. That is all he has been talking about when relating it to other games. And to an extent, even right now it is. I like how in the middle of the screen there's taking panty shots ticked as if it's still going to be a feature. You know, the feature that everyone is accusing you of for sexualization of minors. SNAP! Another excellent collection to my cringe folder. That is the second creepiest smile ever. Yeah, probably because it will still be a feature. While I normally say fiction is fiction, but instead his morals make me laugh a bit. It seems that you have a problem with people taking pictures of panties, but have no problem with the same girls being kidnapped, beaten, tortured, and killed. Priorities! I am sure you can ask anyone for a choice of which is worse, taking pictures of their panties, or kidnapping them, torturing them, and killing them. I'm pretty sure over 99% of the people would rather have a picture taken of their panties. Actually, wait, you shouldn't ask that. With a smile like that, you may be reported as a suspicious figure. And this point seems rather goofy, considering it is Yandere Simulator. You know, Yandere's who are very well known for all the fucked up shit they do to people. Like seriously. Back in late 2016, you made the promise that she would be done and in the game by January of 2017. It is now June of 2018 and you have yet to address this missed date. Actually, he has. In 2016, I tried to estimate what might be a reasonable release date for Yandere Simulator. Using the information that was available to me at the time, I decided that 2019 sounded like a realistic target to hit. In the two years that have passed since then, I've gained much more knowledge, experience, and information that has helped me to form a new estimate for when I think the game will be completed. And that estimate is... When it's ready. The reason he said that is because he couldn't keep to the schedule and everything was taking longer than expected. That is all I'm going to talk about the rest of the video. Most of it is really just bad points saying, what if everyone quits playing it? Which is unreasonable to think everyone will quit playing it, especially the YouTubers who get a lot of ad revenue to keep playing it. It's just really ridiculous points. To sum up the video, I like Yandere Simulator, but I feel Yandere Simulator gets way too much bad rep for the points that people don't really think about. Releasing Osana now and then adding features in second would just be like listening to your dopamine inside your brain, and then it would kill the faith people have in Yandere Simulator. The Kickstarter is supposed to happen the moment Osana is released, but he wants to advertise it as if it's a good indication for Yandere Simulator when it's done. The majority of the hype will be when Osana is added, which he's banking on for it to get a big Kickstarter for the rest of the game. And there are a decent amount of points that just don't really add up to people criticizing Yandere Dev, but not all of it isn't true. There is actually a decent amount of legit points that do criticize Yandere Dev, which are undeniable facts. Well, I mean, unless you're Argent, aka DSP's second channel. But hey, maybe you want Asana in, and then the features, and you don't mind if the hype dies a lot. Well, then I guess I'll just say this. With the hype dying down, with every release that happens from then on, that would make a lot of people have less of a reason to keep playing it. And if a lot of people are having less of a reason to play it, that means a lot less bugs will be tested out. And with a lot of less bugs tested out, do you really trust Yandere Dev to code it properly without bugs? But hey, maybe you disagree with me. Maybe you disagree with me so much that you actually want to talk it out in a debate. And I'll have to say, sure. In a couple of days, I will be streaming. Anyone can join in. And if you want to talk about Yandere Simulator and anything you have a problem with in this video, then confront me about it. And the only way you will get to know that, though, is if you subscribe and hit that bell button. Possibly, because YouTube's very glitchy. And as always, I bid you adieu. Thanks for watching. Is the video 10 minutes yet?